I think the good news is the government's very committed to it and driving it. And, that, and that's, that initiative has, it takes that kind of leadership to really say, we're going to do this and we're going to fight through this. So we're very keen, if you like, to see UFB get moving because the more fibre there is around our cities, uh, the more commercial customers I can reach with, with our services. Both in Australia and New Zealand, the investment in fibre to the home you know, it's going to be absolutely fantastic for all the cable providers, you know, connecting those two regions up to the US. We're the only telco that's been doing fibre to the home for the last three years. Um, but as I say, we've learnt lessons in just a, just under a pilot that I think um, have been underestimated in the, in the uh, UFB model. There has been a lot of delays. There's a lot of players that come in with a lot of talk and, and offerings, but actually making it work, making it happen, is a lot harder than people think. So it's so expensive to roll fibre around the cities that the business case is very tough for new entrants. And in many ways, telecom is the best placed to carry the cost and risk of that big roll, even with the government subsidy. The uh, imposition of the restructuring on telecom certainly makes sense from, you know, from what it will provide in the market. The key thing is how do you get out there quickly with enough capacity and out to the to the curb or to the door or to the, the home or the building as quickly as possible. Uh, so you need somebody who know, who's got some experience at it. Whoever gets selected it's really important that the government actually helps steer it through and doesn't just hand it off to them. I think that's going to be important for us. The end results are going to be just um, a mishmash of um, a broadband access out there and no one will be using it, so it'll be just wasted um, fibre in the ground. There's been not much discussion at all of the, uh, of, of the service layer again, of how the service is going to be offered to the end user, what they're going to pay, so we suspect that those discussions will be happening early this year. If you look on the um, Crown Fibre website, for example, there's a section reserved there for service providers later on, but there's nothing in there yet. <laughs> which I find really strange. What are they going to use this thing for? What are they going to, you know, how is it going to help us at home with the business, with the economy? How is it going to drive that? Um, there seems to be a serious lack in that type of the leadership role of ultra-fast broadband. Um, and it seems to be focused on, on the pipe side of it, you know, delivering a pipe to the home, having a piece of fibre run into my house. I think it's just been um, a part of the original election promise, put fibre out there, and just the general misunderstanding that without fibre, you can't have services. Uh, in our view, again, it's plumbing. If you can get it and it's cost effective, it's good to have. Uh, but on the flip side, we're in the middle of, a, of a, a, a VDSL pilot with telecom where we're getting 40 to 50 meg speeds over copper uh, in the urban areas. Um, given the choice, we would use the best access product for, uh, that'll support the end user products, uh, but it won't be fibre in all cases. If you don't improve the data caps on your plans, so, you know, you get your, your broadband plans today, you get three gig per month as your standard data plan. Well, if you move to fibre, you'll go through that three gig within kind of 30 seconds. And so what has to happen is those entry level plans need to move up to 50 gig or 100 gig. So it moves towards our goal of having unlimited broadband in New Zealand marketplace. Because if you keep the data caps the same, then no one's gonna move to fibre. And, uh, you know, the government's making this big investment because sees as part of enabling New Zealand. Yeah, so it has to be successful at that level. And, uh, you know, it'll help drive international bandwidth. Absolutely.